guys, welcome back to my channel. I have had an overarching question lately on my channel, not only on my channel, but also on Instagram. And I'm talking like at least three to five comments on every video lately, on everything I post on Instagram, I get DMs about it. So I thought, you know what? I am going to do a video on this so that it hopefully will answer some of y'all's questions. And then I'll have something to relay to questions in the future, really people to look back on. And this is gonna be all about sunscreen because I never come on this channel, this camera, my phone camera ever without sunscreen on, unless I'm doing a skincare video and I come on with nothing on my face. It is hard for me personally to watch like get ready with me videos on Instagram and YouTube where people start out with their skincare and they're like, oh, this moisturizer is so great under makeup. And then they go straight into makeup and they don't put a sunscreen on. It just kills me. But that's just me personally because I am one who truly believes that sunscreen should be worn 365 days a year, inside, outside, hot, cold, sunny, cloudy, does not matter. The sun is the number one aging aspect to our skin, hands down, period, period. So if you care anything about having your skin having less fines and lines and wrinkles, less hyperpigmentation and age spots and sunspots, definitely you need to be wearing a sunscreen. But it also obviously helps with skin cancer. Chad recently, I say recently, it's been about six months now, had 25 stitches on his back from cancer being cut out of his back. And I have always been big on sunscreen, but ever since then, it's like, it just, it's not even a question to me. It's just not worth it. I've had too many people in my life with cancer that I just, if there's something that I can do to help prevent it, I'm going to do it. So I wear sunscreen on my hands, on my chest. If it's in the summer, I wear it on my arms, but I never go without it on my face. So people ask me all the time, what sunscreen do you have on? Or what do you have on before you put on foundation? Your face is already so glowy. What's your skincare routine? What SPF works great under foundations? What do you think wears the best? All of these questions. So what I did was I compiled my, now look, I, I like sunscreen. Okay, so I rotate between five of them for different reasons. So I wanted to go through all five of them. I'm gonna cut away to me putting them on so you can see what they look like, how I apply them, how they lay on the skin. And then I'm gonna tell you why I choose each of these sunscreens per day because there are different occasions and situations where I feel like one is going to work better for me over another. So let's go ahead and jump in to my favorite sunscreens, when and why and how I wear them right now. So all of these are specific SPFs. They're not moisturizers that contain SPFs. I will say I grew up wearing those and a lot of people ask me, you know, if you don't know, I'm 41. I have pretty normal dry skin right now for in the winter. Um, but you know, a lot of people ask me, what's your secret to your skin? I have a very extensive skincare routine. And I mean, to be honest, I've got good genetics. My grandma, my mom, good skin. Even my dad has good skin. So I, that has a lot to play in it too. But I wholly believe that since I was about 10 years old, I have used a moisturizer with a sunscreen or a sunscreen every day. So I thank my mom for that. <laughs> and I really attribute a lot of it to that. So I have five sunscreens here. Let's start out with the first one. This is the second tube of this that I have used, almost gone through, and this is by Supergoo. This is the Mineral Matte Screen. Now all of these that I'm gonna talk about have mineral sunscreen blockers in them. That's just what I prefer. If you find a sunscreen that's got chemical blockers that you'll wear, wear that sucker. I've always heard and said that the best sunscreen is the one that you will wear. So definitely like, this is not the only ones that are gonna work, they're just what I prefer. So this is an SPF 40, and it is comprised of titanium dioxide 0.7%, which is a very small amount. The majority of it is zinc oxide at 17%. So this has a very moussey texture to it. It looks like it has a little bit of a tint, right? And as you, 
rub it in, the tint is pretty mild. So I'll, I'll cut away to me applying it. And I think you'll be able to see, you can still see my redness through this. Um, it's not something that's going to be overly tinted. It's definitely not something that I would say could be a foundation in itself. But when I choose to wear this is when I am going to be wearing a super luminous foundation or it's very hot outside, it's very humid, I need something to be a little bit more mattifying. I don't want to go in with a dewy foundation on top of a dewy sunscreen because then it just starts looking greasy. That's when I choose to wear this. I don't necessarily have foundations that I will only wear this under. However, I will say my beloved Jane Ardell's Jane Ardell Liquid Minerals, this is my favorite sunscreen to wear underneath that. I feel like it applies easier because I do use my fingers for that specific foundation. And I'm telling you, this is like a primer and sunscreen in one. If you need smoothing out, this is gonna be great. If you have dry patches, not the best. I mean, it is a matte sunscreen. It's not horrible over dry patches, but it doesn't do them any favors. Let's just say that. So I really reach for this when I don't have any dry patches in the summer and when I am wearing a more luminous foundation. So that is the Supergoop Mineral Matte Screen. The next one we're gonna talk about is the newest one in my collection. I literally just got this one a couple of weeks ago. And this is from Dr. Dennis Gross. This is the All Physical Lightweight Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30. And this is comprised of 16% zinc oxide. So this one, I, I love the dispenser. I just feel like it, I don't know, it's just, I like it. <laughs> I don't have any other reason. It comes out pretty white, as you can see, but as you can also see, when I cut away to applying it, it does sink in very nicely. Now I will say this does make my skin the most pale out of all of these. However, it does sink in very nicely. I don't foresee me having any kind of issue wearing this by itself to the beach or anything and feeling self-conscious because my face is chalky. It's not like that at all. This to me is going to be the most universal non-tinted sunscreen that I'm gonna talk about. If you have dry skin, I really think you're gonna like this. This is oil-free, but it does leave a little bit of a dew. Now, typically when I put my sunscreen on, it's probably a good hour before I put makeup on top of it. So it has a chance to really sink into my skin, but I have used this where I went directly into makeup and it just, it leaves a little bit of luminosity, but it does settle in nicely and it certainly does not get more luminous throughout the day. So if you have oily skin and you don't necessarily like the texture, the moussey texture of this one, I would try this one and just see, but it is very universal in my opinion. And if you don't like a tinted sunscreen, but you definitely want something that's gonna lay nicely under makeup and give just a tad bit of a glow, I would definitely look into this one. I was very impressed by it. I think it wears well underneath makeup and by itself, and it has really, really good reviews for a reason. So the Dr. Dennis Gross All Physical Lightweight Wrinkle Defense. Now let's talk about a couple that I pick and choose when I'm having two situations. One is a situation where I absolutely am not gonna wear makeup that day. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is one that I um, almost always choose in that situation, and this is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Flex. So as you can see in the cutaway, it comes out completely white, but if you look really close, you can see these tiny little pigment beads within the white sunscreen. And as you rub them together on your hands, it, the pigment beads break up and they become a shade. So these do. this does come in multiple shades. I'm in the shade medium, but they also have fair, they have a deep, I believe they have four shades in total. And this one has the most coverage when I apply it. So therefore, I honestly can put this on, stick a little concealer on, some mascara, and I am good to go. I don't need anything else. So if you're someone who doesn't really wear makeup, 
but they want a little bit of skin evening, they want some coverage, they want something that's gonna wear well throughout the day, I would definitely look into the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield <laughs> Flex. Now, the regular Sun Forgettable Face Shield does not have a tint to it. It's more of a universal shade. However, they do have a bronze that you can add to it if you wanted to, but I really like these Flex because I just feel like they provide the best amount of coverage. Now, I do have another favorite when I am not wearing foundation one day or like today, which I'm wearing the Flex today, I am gonna be wearing a powder foundation because I feel like these tinted sunscreens are very nice as a base for powder foundation. It gives a little bit more coverage so you're not having to go in with concealer underneath the powder. And it's just a very nice combination. So a lot of times, even though today I'm wearing the Color Science, a lot of times when I'm wearing powder foundation, I will reach for the Elastin Hydro Tint Pro Mineral. This is probably the fourth tube that I have gone through of this, and this does have a tint. Now, the only bad thing about this, and it can be a, a big bad thing depending on your skin tone, is that they do only have one tint. It can be too dark or too light. I have feel like I've heard little Birdie say that they're working on additional tints, but this one is perfect for my skin tone. So it comes out, it's a very moisturizing sunscreen. I realized I didn't tell you on the Color Science, this is zinc oxide 12% on the Color Science, and then the Elastin is titanium 8.9 and zinc 3.4. So this is an SPF 36, and it gives, and you'll see in the cutaway too, it gives such a beautiful glow to the skin. But it's not, especially as it sinks in, it's not so much of a glow where I am uncomfortable wearing it by itself because I feel like it makes me look too greasy. It's not that at all. It's just a very pretty healthy skin glow. I will wear this one all the way up under my eyes. I'll put it on my eyelids. It's so pretty. I get asked all the time what I'm wearing on my face when I just wear this foundation. But again, I feel like it works really, really well underneath powder foundations as well, which this one does too. Now I will say, I feel like this one builds up on itself easier than this one does. For instance, I took this one to church camp last year. It's all I wore because who wears makeup at church camp, right? Like I just put this on in the morning and I would reapply it throughout the day on top of what I already had on because I didn't have time to go wash my face and reapply. It reapplies on top of itself really nicely. I never had an issue with it pilling or breaking up or, you know, just getting gunky, right? I don't necessarily have those issues with this one, but it does build up a little less aesthetically pleasing <laughs> than this one, if that makes any kind of sense. They're both great by themselves. They're both great under powder foundations and they both have a very nice coverage to the skin. Now let's talk about, honestly, it's just my go-to. I wear this one probably 70% of the time and I rotate between this one and another one from the same brand, but this is Elta MD UV Restore Broad Spectrum SPF 40. Now, another one that I rotate through is the UV Elements. I'll show you this one. This is titanium dioxide 2%, zinc oxide 15%. They have tinted and non-tinted. I prefer the tinted in this formula, but it's not overly tinted as I think you'll be able to see in the cutaway, you can still see redness under my, you can still see my redness after I've applied this. When I first started applying it, it looks pretty warm. Like, you know, some people might be like, well, oh, that's a little orange. But honestly, once I'm done applying it, it does not look that way at all. Sinks in very nicely. I have worn this plenty of times without makeup and I don't feel self-conscious about the tint. But if you don't like a tint, they definitely do have this in a non-tinted version, but this is a more moisturizing version to me than the UV element. So it has squalane, I believe it has hy hyaluronic acid, which I'm pretty sure UV elements has a couple of those things as well. But this one to me is a little bit more moisturizing. So I prefer the elements in the warmer months and I prefer the restore in the cooler months. 
that's the main difference to me. I feel like this one just has a little bit of the moisture factor in it than a little bit higher of that moisture factor than the element. So for those of y'all who asked me what I feel like the difference is, that is the difference. You'll see me start talking about elements more come April and then through like September. I typically stick to elements and then I'll switch back over to restore. Chad uses elements every single day and then he uses the Color Science body the bronze body sunscreen all over his body every day. Those are his two favorites. But this one honestly is just my go-to. I don't have a single foundation that this does not work under. I do not have a single moisturizer that it does not work over. It never fails me. L to MD sunscreens never fail me. I use the um, UV physical on Audrey Kate because she hates a tint and she just really, she's like, don't put a single tint on me. I do not like it. She is very, very adamant on that. So she uses the UV physical. Um, Cortland likes the elements and she, um, the UV elements. And she also likes the uh, Color Science Original Sun Forgettable. I try my best to make sure they're wearing sunscreen every day. It's, I mean, sometimes it's a battle. I'm just not going to fight it in, on any particular morning. But honestly, it's just such an important part of your daily routine. And this one has been in my collection. Elements started being in my SPF collection, I wanna say five years ago. And I have not looked back from L to MD since. So L to MD UV Restore Broad Spectrum SPF 40. And then I can't not talk about how I reapply my sunscreen throughout the day, especially on days when I have makeup on. I talked about this in my makeup products that I absolutely cannot and will not be without even though it's technically skincare, but this is the Powder Me SPF from Jane Iredell. I just had to grab it out of my purse because I do keep it in my purse at all times. This is what I reapply throughout the day. Typically, and I know I said it in the other video, if it's a normal school work day, I will take my girls to school, I'll come home, I'll do my makeup, I'll do whatever I need to do if I have clients, if I have errands, if I'm filming, whatever I need to do. And then before I go pick them up from school, I will reapply this on the skin very liberally. Lots of reasons why I like this. It has a twist up brush that is removable. So I wash this every time I deep clean my makeup brushes. I will grab this out of my purse and I will wash this as well. It's magnetic, so it drops back on and it's very, very soft. You can hopefully see that powder coming out. It is not scratchy. I just love that you can remove it because not all makeup or not all SPF brushes, you can remove it. And to me, they get super gunky and I just feel like I'm brushing on more bacteria than I'm helping my skin. And then it has refills. So you take, screw the bottom. You can see I don't have that much left in this one. And then it comes with an extra refill of this and you can just buy the refill. So you're not buying the full component every time. And then it just screws back in and you can continue to use it. They do have various shades. I'm in the shade Nude and this is SPF 30. So again, I love it. It does not mess up my makeup at all. It gives a little bit of a mattified look, but not flat matte, not cakey. It's just if I have a little bit of shine going on, once I brush this all over, that shine goes away and it almost puts like a really nice blurred filter on the skin. I love it so much. And again, I just will not be without it. So while I so think that this initial proper amount of sunscreen to be put on your face and neck and decollete and whatever else is showing is very important in the morning, I also think that if we are makeup wearers, we need to be cognizant of reapplying it the best we can throughout the day since it's obviously not going to be practical to put this on over your makeup. So hopefully that was helpful because again, I know so many people have been asking me and these are the five sunscreens that I use the most. And again, I have that many because I do find that some work better for certain situations over others. But if I had to pick one out of all of these, I would go with the L to MD. 
I don't wanna have to pick one out of all of them because I love them all for different reasons, but that is the tried and true, never failed me selection out of the bunch. So as always, I wanna know what your favorite SPF is down in the comment section below. Let's share so that if anybody isn't a sunscreen wearer, maybe they're able to find one that they absolutely love and won't look back on. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, safe, and sane. And that most of all, you go out and have a very blessed day.